Henry Ford once said, the only thing worse than training your employees and having them leave is not training them and having them stay. Now, Henry Ford, who was known for his wit, was obviously being a little tongue-in-cheek there. But it's true. As managers of people, we want to do two things. Help them become better and keep them in our organization. And the harsh reality is, your organization will suffer if you can't do both of those things. But how exactly do we do that? How do we approach employee development in a way that maximizes each team member's full potential and keeps them interested and motivated about their development? And once we've invested our company's time, energy, and capital in developing them, how can we best ensure we retain them in our organization? In this course, we're going to show you how to do exactly that. More than $500 billion is lost every year due to employee disengagement. 74% of employees don't believe they are reaching their full potential. 76% of employees are looking for career growth opportunities. These statistics show that employee development is an increasingly important area that businesses should focus on. Our course is going to consist of a series of critical discussion points. These are designed to cover this broad topic as thoroughly as possible to encourage growth in these vital areas and to facilitate a real and fruitful discussion within your organization about how you can each improve on this essential characteristic both at work and in your personal lives in general. Some of these will be pretty lengthy and some will be relatively straightforward and brief. At the very end of this roadmap comes the most important final step. Discussion time. Do not skip this. This is the most important part of this training. When you finish this course, you need to spend at least an hour or so going over the questions we supply at the end as a group. Whoever's the head honcho in the group should designate a facilitator whose responsibility it is that each question is covered and that everyone, time permitting, is able to have their say. Make sure all contributions are valued, all suggestions considered, and all opinions respected. Start with yourself. Telling others to improve is no sweat but actually doing it is easier said than done. Marshall Goldsmith told it best when he said, to develop others, start with yourself. To make others listen to your advice, you first need to practice what you preach. After all, you don't want to end up as a hypocrite in the workplace. Being the head of the group, you need to lead by example. Show your employees that you highly value development by being the quintessential of it. In that way, they will see you as a genuine mentor, knowing that you're always concerned about what's best for them and the business. Once they see the perks from your development, they will be more motivated to follow your footsteps. Moreover, you can use the skills you've acquired to better manage your employees. Respectfully discuss it with them. Your employees need to understand that discussing development with them is not your devious way to expose their weaknesses. This is why you need to lay the groundwork of trust and mutual respect. 
let them know at the sit-down that you genuinely care for them as an individual and that their growth is your top concern. However, some may feel that development is optional. For others, they might not take it seriously. This is where accountability should take place. Help them to see that you're invested in their success and that their talents, when enhanced, can lift the company to greater heights. This will inspire them to take ownership of the process and recognize the value of their growth. Insert development opportunities in weekly meetings. Employee development has been so overlooked that it only becomes the crux of the matter during annual reviews. Don't let another year slip away without accomplishing anything for your team. Make it a point to engage development regularly. You can do this by improving your weekly meetings. Analyze your weekly agenda. Look for ways on how you can insert development. For instance, after each meeting, ask questions to draw out improvement. You can use questions like, what skills would you most like to improve on? Or, what can I do to help you improve? Incorporating development in weekly meetings creates a habit of striving to be a better version of themselves every day. Learn to delegate tasks. Managers are often notorious for juggling a lot of things at once, but as the business gets busy, you might have to accept the fact that you're not a superhero. You can't do it all. But what you can do is to lighten your load by finding a helping hand, or even better, a set of hands. Delegating tasks and responsibilities not only saves you more time, but also helps your employees to develop their skills. No doubt, it's definitely a win-win. Of course, delegating responsibilities can be a challenge at first. Most of the time, managers feel skeptical to hand over tasks to other employees. A big reason why is that they're worried that things won't be handled the same way. Much worse, they may feel that they just might end up sabotaging the work. Trust will play a vital role as you pass over these new assignments to them. Another important thing to do when entrusting new roles is to lower your expectations. After all, you can't expect them to master something at the outset. You have to understand that they may fall at first, and that it's your responsibility to provide additional guidance as they continue to learn from their mistakes. And who knows? They may end up doing the job better than you. Give out stretch assignments. A powerful way to grow as an individual is by stepping out of your comfort zone. This is why stretch assignments are one of the most effective ways an employee can maximize development. Stretch assignments are tasks given to employees that are beyond their current roles and skills. These tasks are designed to test their limits, allowing them to stretch developmentally. By placing them in uncomfortable situations, you force them to think outside the box, thus helping them to learn and grow. What are the benefits of having stretch assignments? 1. Recognizes leadership. Putting your employees in real-world situations helps you determine the potential leaders in your team. Furthermore, receiving more stretch assignments sends them signals that the organization see them as a leader. 2. Low-Cost Development Employee development normally involves training, and this can be costly when aggregated. On the other hand, stretch assignments are effective tools that remain cost-neutral. The simple reason is that stretch assignments can often be done in conjunction with the employee's regular work. 3. Increases Retention Rate Many who receive stretch assignments feel that they are more valued as an employee and are thrilled to see that the organization sees their potential. When employees feel that they are highly regarded, 
it moves them to work harder and to be more engaged with the organization. 4. Helps you get the most important work done. Managers often have too much on their plate. Handing out stretch assignments not only is an effective strategy for developing your employees, but also is a great way to offload other tasks so you can focus on the more important ones. What are examples of stretch assignments? Well, here are a few. Manage a volunteer or intern. Participate in the company's strategic planning process. Join a team dealing with conflict. Delivering a presentation to a VIP client. Implement a new or important company project. Turning around a failing product or launching a new product. Oversee people from different cultures, gender, racial, or ethnic backgrounds. Leading the implementation of new tools to replace manual processes. Convening or serving on a task force created to solve a difficult problem. Performing data analysis to find business efficiencies. Write a policy statement. Create a customer satisfaction survey. Land a new customer contract. As employees take on stretch assignments, they'll be compelled to develop new technical, business, or leadership skills. Moreover, they'll start to build relationships with new stakeholders and increase their visibility and chances of getting a promotion or raise. Introduce new networks. Managers are often in the position to open doors for creating new connections to employees. Make network introductions to role models, subject matter experts, and mentors. Linking them additional contacts helps them grow as workers and individuals. Helping them to expand their network creates a lot of opportunities to receive further support, knowledge, and advice on how to grow professionally and personally. Give regular feedback. We all have leadership blind spots. A manager should have a keen eye for these flaws and should openly discuss it with the employees with the goal of calibration and improvement. Note, however, that giving out feedback shouldn't only be discussed during performance reviews, but rather should be done throughout the year. Josh Sloan, People Scientist and Data Lab Lead at Culture Amp, made emphasis on the importance of feedback. He said, feedback doesn't have to be when you're sitting down for a one-on-one -on -one meeting. It's valuable to get feedback, especially when it's positive at any time. It's like when you get a present on a day that's not your birthday. It's extra special because it's unexpected. There are two types of employee feedback. Number one. Reinforcing Employee Feedback Reinforcing feedback encourages an employee to keep doing a certain positive behavior. When we give this type of criticism, we are verbally reinforcing the positive effects of someone's actions, thus the derivation of the term. Reinforcing feedback can be given any time, and the more you give them out, the better. Here are some examples of reinforcing feedback you can use. 1. Something I really appreciate about you is... Example. Something I really appreciate about you is your proactive attitude in solving problems. 2. I would love to see you do more of X as it relates to Y. Example. One of your most impactful moments were the insights you gleaned based on Project X. It shows the power of innovation and increases customer satisfaction. I would love to see you do more of this. 3. One of the things I admire about you is... Example. One of the things I admire about you is your ability to oversee a team. 4. I think you did a great job when you, insert specifics, 
It showed that you had Example I think you did a great job when you conducted the business meeting. It showed that you are capable of getting people to work together and communicate effectively. I commend your communication skills. 5. I can see you're having a positive impact in Example I can see you're having a positive impact in your new department. People seem happy. Number 2. Redirecting Employee Feedback The big difference between negative and redirecting feedback relies on the end goal. If we gave someone strictly negative feedback, we're simply telling them to stop doing something. With redirecting feedback, we're telling someone that we want them to stop doing X and start doing Y, implying a benefit when doing that change. Like reinforcing feedback, redirecting feedback can be given at any time. However, it would be best if we ask first before giving out such evaluations. Another practical suggestion is to get a feel for that person first. Try to discern their self-awareness of your potential feedback. This will help you assess whether the person is unaware or conscious of their negative traits. Here are examples of redirecting feedback. 1. I'd like to give you some feedback. Is now a good time? 2. Do you have a moment to catch up about how X went? 3. Can we talk about X? What do you think is going well and what didn't go well? 4. This is hard for me to say. Ongoing employee feedback in the workplace is vital in replacing outdated performance reviews and shifts the focus in helping people develop. Well-constructed feedback serves as a great tool for you and your team in building a feedback-friendly environment. Implement Job Shadowing Job shadowing is an activity in which a staff from one area of the organization has the opportunity to work alongside other staff in a different area of the organization and gain insight from the experience. This process can also be used to train an individual within a department to work alongside more experienced colleagues so they can learn and grow within their current role. There are three persons involved in job shadowing. Number one, the manager. The manager should decide whether to apply job shadowing as a way of developing their current role or as a part of their career development on taking on a new role. Managers also decide what the process will look like and how long the activity should last. Number two, the host. A host is an individual who agrees to be shadowed. At first, it may seem that their role is a no-brainer, just having someone follow you around while you work. But actually, it still does involve participation and thought. They have to consider how to spend the allotted time and how long each period of shadowing should be. They will also need to manage their work obligations to ensure that the shadowing experience does not get in the way of their daily tasks. Number three, the visitor or guest. Prior to the job shadowing, the visitor needs to consider why they are doing it and what they hope to achieve from it. Also, before the actual day, the visitor should meet up with the manager or the host to discuss and set objectives for the sessions. The visitor should make the most out of the shadowing sessions. When you provide job shadowing sessions to your employees, they'll get to understand how other departments work learn from the experiences of other colleagues, grasp the importance of how other roles support the organization, appreciate other needs and priorities outside of their work role, increase their exposure to different roles and functions within the organization, support their career development. Job shadowing helps employees to learn new skills, qualities, 
and related competencies that can be helpful to their current role. Moreover, being exposed to different areas within the organization can help them gain a deeper appreciation of how other departments work and how their roles contribute to the success of the organization. This, in turn, will boost their morale and will help them mature professionally. Establishing Cross-Training Programs Cross-Training is a program in which an employee gets to do a different part of the organization. Basically, Trainee A gets to do the task of Trainee B, while Trainee B does the task of Trainee A. The big difference between job shadowing and cross-training is that job shadowing is more on observation, while cross-training is more hands-on. Cross-training is an effective approach to strengthening your organization and enhancing employee performance. Furthermore, it can also improve morale, boosting productivity and efficiency in the workplace. How can you develop a cross-training program? Well, here are some suggestions. Look for opportunities to cross-train within your function. Ask your team about what roles and tasks they are interested in and create an informal cross-training work with team members. Encourage employees to identify enrichment opportunities as part of cross-training activities. Communicate with your executives about forming an official job rotation program across your organization. Coordinate with the HR department in making cross-training and job rotation initiatives. Offer incentives for every role, function, system, or product that an employee has learned. Gather employee feedback on their interest and satisfaction in the cross-training work. Ask for suggestions on how to improve in the next session. Be a role model by seeking out job expansion and job enrichment programs for yourself. What are the benefits of conducting cross-training in your organization? Number one, it gives employees room to grow and can boost team performance. In a cross-training program, employees can have the opportunity of trying out different areas within the organization. Being exposed to different departments can help them build diverse skill sets and support their professional growth. Furthermore, gathering diversified ideas help departments boost team performance. Number two, it identifies promising leaders. Cross-training programs are great scouting grounds for future leaders in your organization. Job rotations allow employees to apply their strengths in taking on new roles. Giving them exposure to tasks with different needs and dynamics allows them to demonstrate their leadership potential that might otherwise be overlooked. Number three, it enhances recruitment and retention endeavors. An organization that promotes professional development is one of the strongest benefits that it can offer. The reason is that applicants look for organizations that provide opportunities to grow as leaders and offer professional development training programs. Cross-training is also helpful to increase the retention rate. Training your employees in different areas spur their desire to learn new skills and mature more as a professional. Number four, it builds an empathetic work environment. When workers begin to spend time with others outside of their department, they'll get to know what their life is on a day-to-day -day basis. As a result, they cultivate empathy, an important quality in leadership. When employees incorporate empathy in the workplace, it increases morale, productivity, and loyalty within the organization. Cross-training is a learning experience that invigorates the life of the organization. It's also cost-efficient and can be done with a limited budget. These programs foster collaboration and innovation in the workplace, resulting in happier, more productive workers. Create Individual Development Plans, IDPs. An Individual Development Plan, IDP, 
is a tool to assist employees in career development. It is a formal document outlining the projected growth of an employee. The primary purpose of an IDP is to help them reach short-term and long-term goals, learn, improve specific skills, and ultimately meet a certain standard by a specified time. An IDP is not a performance evaluation tool, nor is it a one-time activity. Rather, it serves as an agreement between an employee and employer and involves preparation and continuous feedback. The content of an IDP can vary from one organization to another, but it should always contain these key elements. Career Goals This list contains all the professional goals to be achieved with target dates and actual completion dates. It can also contain actionable steps to achieve each goal. Goals can be structured around the employee's current role or by the ways on how they can contribute to the company. Assessment of Top Strengths and Development Needs These are bullet points of your self-assessment on what top strengths you currently possess and what areas you need to improve by the end of the specified time. Generally, you list three to six top strengths and top three development needs. Development Goals this is a list of brief goals that correspond with each development need. For example, if your development need is to improve communication skills, your development goal can be take a course on active listening or public speaking. Provide a list of ideas and discuss it with your manager on how to achieve each goal. Miscellaneous section. This section contains other important information like dates, costs, and persons assigned. This part is normally filled out during the discussion with the manager. Setting dates allows managers to monitor you so you can stay committed. Any costs needed should be approved by them. Another thing to note is that though you'll be responsible for most of your plan, managers may still play a few roles in helping you achieve the process. How can you implement IDPs in your organization? Here are four steps. 1. Start with yourself. The best leaders lead by example. When employees that development plans are applied in all levels of the organization and that the highest ones work on their self-improvement, it encourages them to assess themselves and pursue development. 2. Prepare a questionnaire. As a manager, your goal is to understand the perspective of your employee so they can achieve their goals and help your company. Prepare a development plan questionnaire for your employees. Ask them to identify career goals and aspirations, things that inspire and motivate them, passions, skills, and talents, development opportunities. 3. Discuss with your employee. Meet with your employee and discuss the objectives. It would be best to let the employee lead the discussion when considering their goals, passions, and skills. Collaborate to form actionable steps to achieve their goals. Make sure this session will be meaningful and enjoyable for both parties. 4. Create a plan. Finally, create a plan to arrange the best way to achieve their goals. When making a plan, consider the following. The balance between reaching their career goals while handling primary responsibilities. The company's budget and the employee schedule. If action steps are measurable. If action steps will benefit both the employee and the company. How can implementing IDPs help your organization? Here are just some of the benefits. Serves as an administrative tool for identifying and tracking development needs. Assisting in planning for the unit's training and development requirements. Aligns employee development with the company's mission, goals, and objectives. Becomes an oath of commitment between the employee and manager collaborating to achieve career goals. 
opens opportunities for collaboration and brainstorming, provides a solid framework for development. Individual development plans not only enhance employee development, but also increases engagement and loyalty because employees see that the company is invested in their success. Moreover, achieving IDPs boosts productivity and yields more highly skilled employees. Incorporate employee coaching. Employee coaching is defined as a process that focuses on an individual over a specific period of time with the goal of helping them develop effectively. Coaching is designed to help employees learn or improve core skills valuable to the organization. The objective of coaching is to aid employees in making noticeable growth in their functional areas. Coaching is an effective tool for employee development, but your company will also reap the benefits of having a highly skilled workforce. To develop effective coaching, here are seven steps you should do. 1. Form Mutual Trust Trust is the groundwork of any relationship. The same is true with coaching. Without a degree of mutual trust between coach and employee, Effective coaching is futile. Employees should feel that they can connect to you on a personal level and that they can feel your sympathy. 2. Meet with your employee. Before the first coaching session, hold a meeting with your employee and discuss the objectives. In a friendly and non judgmental way, explain the reasons why a coaching session was arranged. This puts the employee at ease, especially if the reason behind starting a coaching session comes from a result from poor performance. 3. Establish an agreement. The most critical part of the coaching process is helping your employee recognize their performance issues. You should define and specify the issues that need to be improved and then get the employee to admit their flaws. Explain empathetically why you want to help them develop. At the end of the meeting, a verbal agreement should be established, implying that the employee is willing to be coached. 4. Be open to alternatives. Encourage your employee to find alternative solutions that can maximize their development. Let them know that you are open to suggestions and that your ultimate goal is for them to reach their full potential. 5. Secure a commitment. The manager must make sure that they form a verbal commitment from the employee on what action they should take, what steps they should do, and when they expect to achieve the goal. Make sure to give praise and show support to their decision. 6. Regularly assess their performance. Evaluate their progress on a regular basis to see if they are implementing their decision. You should then eventually limit checking in on them for your goal is to help them to be able to monitor and correct their own performance. 7. Provide needed feedback. Regularly provide feedback during the coaching sessions. Let them know if they are on the right track or if something still needs some work. Make sure to give an incentive or reward for every small win they make. What are the benefits of employee coaching to your organization? Here are a few. Improved performance leads to increased productivity and bears more fruitful results. Employees develop self-esteem and increase job satisfaction encourages employees to take more responsibility, increases employee and staff engagement, helps identify and develop top-notch employees. It recognizes individual and organizational development opportunities, shows the organization's dedication to human resource development. Coaching creates promising leaders that will take on more challenging roles in the near future. 
Incorporating coaching in your organization guarantees employee retention, optimum performance, and a constant flow of individual improvement. Invest in your resources. From the outset, the organization should invest in their employees to get the most out of them. This may mean spending real money for their development. This can include attending online training and conferences, enrolling in online learning programs, and providing tangible tools and resources like books and training plans. Investing in your employees' growth not only improves their skills and deepens their knowledge of the industry, but it also increases job satisfaction, knowing that you are legitimately invested in their success. And now, it's discussion time. The most important part of this training. Whoever's the head honcho in the group should designate a facilitator whose responsibility it is that each of the questions you see on your screen is covered and that everyone, time permitting, is able to have their say. Make sure all contributions are valued, all suggestions considered, and all opinions respected.